Hey, I want to thank all of you guys who left comments and suggestions for designing the new drill press stand. Those have really helped out a lot and got me thinking about a lot of things that I hadn't really given any thought to. Uh, I want to go through a few of those comments. First, the top comment was from David Walser. David, thank you for your suggestion. His main point being that to consider is the height of the table, the drill press table, when you're lining up where to drill a hole in a board. In other words, when you're, you got a board, you've got like an X or something, you want to drill it right in the center of that, you're going to do one of these numbers. You're going to kind of line it, you're going to move the board around until you get it where you want it and lock it in. So his thought is that if I go too low on this thing, I'm going to be doing one of these deals, bending over to just line that up. And a lot of you echoed that same suggestion. And while I don't worry too much about bending over, like in fact, I think it's kind of good for us to, to do that and it engages our core as, a, as we can hinge over. I understand a lot of people do have back problems and that can be get real tiresome quick if you have to line up a lot of boards. So that comes down to two things to think about in height placement, setting up your workpiece, where you're gonna be standing for that, and then how you're gonna be standing while you're drilling, presumably, you know, multiple holes. So I think there just has to be a compromise in between those two heights. Gregory Weber and a few other people weren't thrilled with the idea of keeping the drill press back here in the corner, just because longer pieces of wood it might be difficult to set those in there with that kind of trapped back there. And I think that I, again, I kind of partially agree with that and partially don't. First of all, of course, the thing's going to be on casters. And in my situation, I almost always, I move all of my tools out when I'm using them. So that's not too much of a consideration. But there's lots of times when I just need to drill a quick hole or two, and it's real handy not to have to pull that out. So I think one of the things I was thinking about in yesterday's video was to leave the sanding station over here and then this drill press would go right here where this cabinet is and then that still gives me room on both sides without necessarily having to pull it out so i think this is all going to come down to moving that big cabinet over there lorian martinez suggested that casters that you can lower it onto the floor would be a good idea i do too it'd be like my table saw where you just kind of roll it around then when you got it positioned you can drop it into place but I don't know if I really want to make those and I'm not sure if I run a, I want to buy a system like that. So I think for the most part, the casters, as long as they lock, and I'm going to be using these big heavy duty ones that Masato sent me. These are like the ones on my workbench and those are pretty stable. So I think I'm okay that way. Frank DeRosa actually did a little bit of research into kind of the ergonomics of drill presses and what would be a good height. And wow, thank you so much for that information. What he suggested, and especially for repetitive use, is that the levers should be at shoulder height. And that is basically where these are now, but it just, it feels too high. And I also, I don't like the idea of this being up so high that I, it's really difficult to change those belts. Iron Wizard and a few other people suggested that I incorporate some fold up wings, kind of like on my miter saw station for helping to support longer boards. And I like that suggestion, but it does kind of complicate things a bit because the table of the drill press itself moves up and down. So the wings would have to be attached to this table or they would have to be adjustable up and down. April, Wil April Wilkerson made a table kind of like that where the two sides can come up and you know, it gives her a little bit extra space, but it's still not a full extension. So I'm not sure if I really want to get into that. I thought that might be something that I could incorporate at a later date too. He also suggested that I incorporate some dust collection. I got a few of you suggested that and there are dust collection systems for drill press. I had a company send me one one time to try out and it was this big kind of shroud. I forget what it was called, like drill drill sucker or something, <laughs> drill sawdust sucker. I don't remember, but it would it fit over there and it was just, it was really cumbersome. And I tried it out and I'm like, yeah, this is just, it's not that difficult to just vacuum up some wood chips so i didn't bother and plus those are always just chips it's not fine sawdust usually a couple of you suggested that i put my dumbbells in the bottom of the cabinet to give it some more stability and 
That's a great idea, really. I don't think I'll do that because I'm pretty happy with my roll around box, which is really easy to roll out to my weight bench or wherever I need it. But a lot of you also suggested that I put in some sort of weight, some ballast basically in the bottom. So I think I will do that just to help give it some more support. Maybe some sand or even bricks or some bricks would probably be a good idea because I got plenty of bricks. Randy Owen suggested that the 29 inch height that I was talking about yesterday would probably be a little too low. And after reading through all of your comments, I think he's right. I think that that was just being a little too aggressive. He thought that my finishing cabinet looked like about the right height. And as I got to thinking about it, I think he's right. So I think the 32 inch height seems a little bit better. I don't think I've ever given this much consideration to the height of a tool, especially one that I don't really use that often. Matthew Miller suggested that I incorporate storage for my table saw sleds that are hanging on the wall. They would just be vertical and they could slide in there. And that is a fantastic suggestion. I'm really giving that one some serious consideration because that would free up a lot of kind of wasted wall space because I don't use those sleds a whole lot. Anyways, it's time to get to work. Let me see if I can start designing something. I'll go ahead and start playing with some designs and then I'll, once I complete the design, then I'll go back through and I'll do a full tutorial of how I got to that point. And these will be separate videos. So let me see what I come up with today on this design. I've been playing around with this design for a few hours now, and this is what I've come up with that I'm pretty pleased with. I had the idea to put my air compressor in here because that thing is really heavy, so it'll give it some support down on the bottom. And also I've been needing a place for that anyways. And this way I'll just be able to, if I want, I can just take it out of there to wherever I need it, or I could actually just use it from in here. This actually isn't my air compressor. That's just kind of uh, what one might look like. So then with that facing that direction, I, it gave me plenty of room for these extra drawers, which I can store stuff for the air compressor. And then I've got another drawer up here in the top. So I think this is a pretty decent design. It goes back a little bit further than I was kind of wanting, but on giving that some extra consideration, I think I need that just so that the wheels aren't so narrow. So this should have a lot of stability and support and I'm looking forward to building this. So what do you think, huh? I was like so pleased with myself that I remembered my compressor and how perfect that would be to fit in there. So I had to measure that all out and make sure. My original idea was so it would go kind of horizontal, but then there's just a lot of wasted space in there. So if I get it to go back that way and I can angle it like this. So if I wanted to, I could just actually use it without having to remove it from the stand, but I don't know, or I could just roll the stand around. I don't know, we'll see. But with all those extra drawers, I'll have plenty of room to store the accessories for that. You know, all the, the air filler upper things for your tires and, and then the, the nail guns and whatnot. And of course, there's extra room for anything related to the drill press that doesn't already fit in my drill and driver station. The only thing I'm not really looking forward to is making all of those drawers. It's just drawers. <sighs> But I really loved your idea of using some of the empty space in there for storing my table saw sleds. So I'm gonna still use that idea, but I just put them in here in my miter saw station and they fit perfectly in there. So once I have all of those tools stored on this wall and that cabinet moved over here, all that leaves me with is my basic mobile workbench, which was stored underneath that cabinet. I always pull it out to use it. So that's just a storage or parking space, really. So what I can do is I can just park it over here, which ha is easy access. So the only thing that leaves a little bit odd is my router table, which is kind of the, the lone man over here on kind of the finishing and wet area of the shop. But I don't think it bothers me that much because I always 
pull it out into the shop whenever I'm using it. All right, so that's the plan. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to do that SketchUp tutorial for you. I didn't wanna do it while I was trying to create this design because that would have just been a lot of fumbling around and changing things and, and whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just kind of deconstruct that design and then build it in more of a structured way so I can show you exactly you know, some of the most common features of SketchUp. So I, I think you'll like that. That'll be a longer video, but I, I wanna get that out to you. And then once I have that video out, I can start building the project. This one may take some time, probably a little bit longer maybe than the printer stand. I'm not quite sure yet. It's all those drawers. Those drawers always take a while. Uh. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow.